Welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And we are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. Today is March something. What is it? Third? Third. I think it's March. It's March 3rd. And this is episode 61. We're coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is a podcast about um, kind of all things making, but especially the fiber arts, knitting, crochet. We'll have some sewing, quilting. What else do we have? I think that's about that. <laughs> ooh, ooh. We've got a fun thing that includes a glass head. A glass head. That's important. <laughs> but here it is behind us. Yeah. <laughs> so I think today we're going to start with a life update. We are going to do finished objects. We'll do works in progress. We'll have a kindness is like sugar segment by Deborah. And then we will have a little bit of shop news at the end. So what's been up with you, Deborah? Well, first I have to say, I'm used to saying I'm Queen Deborah, you're Queen Emily, yes. because years ago, <laughs> um, well, Emily started in years ago on something called Mastering, no, 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 it was Knights, Knights of, of Freedom, Freedom. Mm -hmm. and there was this event, and they had a king and a queen, and Emily, Emily joined in with that, and then she took over, and she was Queen Emily, and her husband was King Richard in this event, and... And then years later, I joined in with Crown of Virtue and was Queen Deborah. So, you know, it's, lots it's of part know of the story. Way. And so lots of people know us that way. <laughs> and so every now and again, I realize that it's kind of ridiculous that we're calling ourselves that. <laughs> well, that's because we're queens of our castles. But we are. And you're queens and kings of your castles. So, and, <laughs> so I had to show this cute little note from a friend where she sent Queen Deborah. <laughs> so cute and i have to show what was inside a loyal <laughs> subject i, love I just it. Thought, i opened that and i just laughed just <laughs> i just thought it was so cute so i have thanks. a little um kind of i don't know what you want to call it a little thing <laughs> tchotchke on my desk mm -hmm. and it just says queen on it and it's just made out of wood and um I really like that. It's fun. It's so fun. we should all feel that way, right? Everybody, you are kings and queens of your castles. Absolutely. So call yourself queen. And people, when they come into your home, should refer to you as your majesty. I mean, that's. Well, all I've told work. you before that I expect <laughs> my children when I ask them to do something to say yes, yes your majesty. majesty. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Anyways, oh, life update. In my home. We're always working on projects. It's just a thing. It's, I don't know. I'm always tired. I can't figure out why. <laughs> but we finish one. No, we never finish a project. We always get to like 85% yes, and then start the next one. So we started working on a new wardrobe for my bedroom. And we've talked about doing this for 10 plus years. I don't know why we've held off. I do know why. It's because you have to have time and money at the same time. Oh, and yes. energy. Those two things. <laughs> time, so time, money, money and energy. energy. And they don't usually line up together. Mm -hmm. So a couple weeks ago, I looked at my husband and I said, we have the time this weekend. Do we have the money? And we were looking and we're like, we have the money we could put towards that. And like, let's do it. So we just find the energy. <laughs> we, yeah, so we just, we we're working on it. So Anyways, the whole idea is that we have a little tiny closet that my husband and I share, and then we each have a dresser. I have a dresser that was my grandmother's. He has a dresser that was his grandfather's, and it's they're beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. They don't match. They don't really go with anything in our home. They're not really um, functional for what we need, and so it's just a blessing now to move forward from that and we built a wall in our bedroom of wardrobes like cabinets from Ikea so I'm going to insert pictures right here mm -hmm. so you can see I was exhausted because it's 11 p.m. Oh, <laughs> and it was man. two days of painting cleaning building assembling fixing and, and then you have still to had, move everything in yep and we still had the doors to put on and some more things and then we had to put everything in it and move everything over. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm excited to come and see it. I wake up in the morning. <laughs> and it's all clean. 
and I want to cry. Like, <laughs> that to me, for everything to be visually tidy is so mm -hmm. important. To not have millions of things everywhere, that's really important to me. So that's so a I feel, wonderful thing. I feel thing. great. So um, Emily asked for a tour of my bedroom, but essentially the picture I showed you is the tour of my bedroom. <laughs> it's that big. <laughs> my room is it's like this big. I live in an old home. The rooms are tiny. So, you know. That's fun. Anyways, that's, that's one thing we've been working on. That's wonderful. You? Well, we celebrated my son Isaac's 16th birthday. Oh He's, word. I know, it's crazy to me. He is, um, his birthday's the day after Valentine's Day. So um, we had a... So he's the love child. <laughs> he is a love child. He's actually my lovey boy. He is the sweetest boy. Just a little spotlight on Isaac. He, um, we had uh, years of infertility and trying to have another baby. And so when we got pregnant with him, it was, it, it was a miracle, you know, it felt that way. Mm. And he is just the happiest, most helpful, respectful, good boy. He um, is. He's just so good. And <laughs> he keeps telling me, you know, mom, two years till I'm 18. And he's planning on serving a mission for our church at 18 years old, just like my, my um, older two kids have done that. Um, and he, so he keeps telling me two years, two years, mom. And I'm like, stop it. You're not leaving <laughs> you me. Want to make me cry. I'm excited for him to do things like that for him. Yes. But I am not excited for him to leave me. But anyway, that's yeah. not yet. So anyway, we had, um, just a little celebration with some of his friends and we were able to do that. And, uh, and he went on a date. He went on his first date. We have a thing about we date, don't date until after 16. And so he went on his first date last weekend. So it's like big milestones for him. Yes. He doesn't have the driver's license yet. We're working on that one. But <laughs> it's just, a he's a of, good boy. A lot of families that we know, um, getting a driver's license is a privilege for their children. And yes. they their children need to have certain grades. They need to earn the money to pay for it, to pay for their insurance, yeah. the gas. And in my household, <laughs> yes. it is a requirement. I'm like, it is 16, a gift to the parent. <laughs> you will have your driver's license. I'm paying for, I, we have a car that you can use, but I drove you for 16 years and now you're driving for me for the next 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. So. You get to run the, to the store and you get to drive your sibling to their dance class. And... But they get a lot of freedom. <laughs> yes. And I pay for gas and I pay for insurance and we provide a car. It's not their car, but we provide one for their <laughs> use. Um, and I just have to say it is the best gift <laughs> I've really ever is. given myself. Well, and he, children that's the thing drive. I've told him because Aria didn't get her license until she was 18. She was petrified of driving yeah. and I was not thrilled with that. <laughs> so with Isaac, I said, you are not doing this. <laughs> so yeah, he'll have it Didn't, before, at least while he's 16, you know? Yeah. Anyway, it, I'm so trying to think of Ella anything else. Ella is so wonderful though. She doesn't just do the driving that I ask her to do. She's like, mom, where's Nadia? Oh, she's at this friend's. Does she need to be picked up? I'll contact her and find out what time oh, I'll that's get her. So and I'm cute. Like, Bless you. Well, and sometimes she drives my kids too, yeah. so it's really great. She's so helpful. That's I a just wonderful thing. it's the best best gift. <laughs> what else, okay, what else? So going on? Aria also started a new job. Let's see. My kids are all doing good things. We've just been busy. We got carpet finally in our family room. Well, the, you had carpet. <laughs> we got re, we carpet. replaced the We'll call it carpet <laughs> that was on the floor before. That's how mine was. <laughs> this is the project that is taking forever. We started, we put the lighting in a year ago. So it was last March and it's taking us forever to get it done. So we're still, we're putting um, new French, we're putting French doors in where our patio doors are. And then we have to put all the trim around the doors mm -hmm. and stuff. And then that door, that room will finally be finished. But Yay. it looks beautiful. And my bookcases are beautiful. The whole thing is just, it's a beautiful room now. I really love it. Anyway, so yeah, we've just, the same kind of things. Lots of projects. Just improving the castle. Yeah, exactly. Projects in the home. But, you know, lots of um, school, homeschool and um, just all kinds of things. So, right. yeah, good stuff. Well, let's get started on some finished objects. Yes, let's do that. Do you have some? I have, I have, a, I've got one or two. Do you say that 
like one or two, meaning seventeen. Two, you probably three, better start, Emily. It's not. It's not too bad. Why don't you get started? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's start with this little guy. This is just a fun little guy. So, um, I did a little Advent yarn, uh, Christmas Advent exchange with my beautiful friend Renee. Well. We did it with a little group and we all rotated. So Renee had me. And one of the things she gave me was the knit along for this little gnome. It was the adventure gnome cow. And um, and this little guy's name is Nutmeg with a G, you know, good nutmeg. <laughs> I do think that's hilarious. It's really cute. All of the little stories that went along with it and recipes and pictures. And it was a really adorable. Um, I was a little overwhelmed with everything else that was going on in December. So I didn't keep up on the knit along, but when the pat, I, I did quite a bit, but when the pattern came out, um, after I sat down and, and worked on it some more and I decided not to give him arms and legs. So it's just his little body, his little nose, his beard, his hat. I like this bobble. Honestly, the bobble is my favorite. Look at that cute. Instead of like a puff ball, it's a knitted <laughs> ball at the end it's really cute anyway so I'm going to put a little ribbon on him and he's going to be an ornament but um I finally finished him so that was really fun and, and the was... yarn is so pretty this is colors that I have for my Christmas tree they're all the pink and burgundy and gold that's what I was going Victorian. to say was really thoughtful about yeah they had contacted the dyer yeah to get just the right colors oh, for your tree. Over who the dyer was because she was, she was lovely. Renee said she was just so delightful to do work on. Do you have on. that information? I do. I just okay, don't so have I'll, it right here. I'll put it down below. Okay, great. But yes, she, I think she should definitely get a, a mention for, I know that Renee said she was just lovely to work her, with. But anyway, isn't that cute? Her customer service was <laughs> above and beyond. Yes, what Renee for was sure. Uh, if you notice, I have done okay with doing show notes in the last few episodes <laughs> I haven't put everything in because sometimes I get tired part way through <laughs> <laughs> so I've done a little bit better with that so if you're wondering check below first it may be there if yes. not do a google search <laughs> <laughs> really we we put as much time as we can into this but we also have to keep our you know life in order. okay here's my glass head I carry it with me everywhere obviously <laughs> And of course, you need to carry a glass. Bag. I have been making costumes for my daughter's Shakespeare play. Well, our, our daughter's <laughs> Shakespeare play. But you've been making for, costumes. Um, and I mentioned that it, I think I mentioned in the last episode, that it is um, a Jane Austen themed, so Regency themed Shakespeare play that is much ado about nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... I have the fun job of making um, bonnets and turbans. Oh my gosh, it's so And it's really fun. So I showed this, but just look at that. <laughs> so great. Is this the one that Abby's wearing? No, no there's Abby's a different one. is a different one. This one is Oh my gosh, else. the back is my favorite. This little, oh, it's so great. And I love the lining on it. just so much fun i just have to say that <laughs> i may have a new calling in life making <laughs> turbans <laughs> a regency milliner <laughs> so because really anything goes it's so true i can just be wild and crazy or understated or whatever it i mean all of it works so um i just pull out whatever i have and start wrapping no tutorial for this. I did um, make a video of the other one that I made for her daughter. That was the first, um, the first turban I made, and I referenced that in the last video. But there's a bumblebee. Yes, this fabric Oops. has <laughs> embroidered bumblebees on it. But all of them were hidden in this fabric, in the folds and the tucks, and so they all got hidden because there's one there. There is one in here, but it got, yeah, just got hidden. But it doesn't really matter. It's just. It's just so fun. It is so great. I just, I just feel like 
we need more hats in our lives. <laughs> why why can turbans not be a thing today <laughs> in our and it always, society? I know I've told you this like many times, but every time you talk about this, it makes me think of Cranford. Actually, Return to Cranford, the second season when Judy Dench is talking about how I've always fancied a turban. It's such a, what is it? Something, something like I it's haven't a, seen it for it's years. It's such a, a becoming headdress or something like that. <laughs> but so it I is. It. I mean, look at that. Okay, so I'll tell you. I used a like a straw hat and cut off the brim. And then I covered the top with a big oval. And then I tucked and pleated and sewed mm. it down. I put a band around the bottom. And then I put another strip here that I gathered and twisted. So, I mean, it's just, just taking it's different pieces. It's almost like pieces. sculpture. It really is. And, then, and some of the spots. What are they doing? They're there? performing a ballet. <laughs> <laughs> Swan Lake. Somebody I think it's more like a tap dance. The <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, tucks and folds and pleats and, you know, the, a glue or so. So, it's really just, you put it on and it looks like a mess. And then you just start pulling things together and wrapping and the, until you like how it looks. And... And like this piece, I put on with it down, and then while I was working on something else, it flipped up, and I was like, "Ooh, that looks nice." So then I stitched it up there. So I, <laughs> I mean, love it's it. just so much. Fun. That's really fun. And so, the trims, like this pleated scallop and the gold, it's so pretty. All right. So how many of you are milliners or want to be? <laughs> if you are or want to be, I challenge you to make a turban. <laughs> But what are you going to do? And put it on a glass head. <laughs> or just whatever. Just wear it whatever. to the grocery store. Send us a picture. I'll put an email below. Or you can post it on Instagram and tag us in it. But come on. Whatever whatever supplies you have on hand, make some, something turban-ish. That's awesome. <laughs> that, that would that be so much fun. Fabulous. The I turban think... challenge. This is what it's... Hashtag, hashtag the, the turban, turban challenge. challenge. There you go. Come on. I'm going to make, I've got two more to make, so I'll share. There All right. Go. There's my, there's that's my beautiful. One. Okay. Turban challenge. The Why turban have we not done this before? <laughs> I just don't understand. I need a notebook, Emily. Um, do you okay. have anything to write anything on? Uh -huh. I do. Give me a moment. Okay. i got to write down turban challenge because I'm going to forget. There it's, you go. Do you have a okay. pen? Okay. <laughs> that's fabulous. So... I hesitate to bring this up, but I'm going to anyway. There has been a comment that some people can't watch me because I'm too chatty and giggly. If you don't like Joy, <laughs> this isn't the podcast for you. <laughs> yes, thank you. By the way, there's no way I'm ever going to change that. <laughs> that's okay, because a lot more of you have commented how much you like that we laugh together. So and that's good. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. I All love right. the comments that we get. We get... 99% of them are gloriously and fun and lovely. I feel like we have really great friends mm -hmm. down below here, you know, in the comment section. <laughs> friends because down below. That just, I'm sorry. In okay. the comment section. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm just having a I told moment. you I it's didn't want to cut things out, Emily. <laughs> I'm calm. I'm calm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. Sometimes I just have a day and things are funny and I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yes, the comments are beautiful. So I thank you it. very much. I'm Move sorry. <laughs> I'm going okay. To I'm going to show you my little bunting. I was inspired by Deborah. First of all, this is entirely 100% copycat Deborah. Oh. Because Deborah I made me fancy. a bunting for my birthday, <laughs> which I have left strung up. It's behind the camera here. Um, and I don't have any plans to Because I've ever invented take it bunting. No, but I copied. <laughs> like, I literally took a piece of paper, put it under the bunting, and traced it oh. <laughs> so I could make it the same shape and size. But that being said, I've had some people who've commented because I posted on um, Instagram. And I think that we could put together a really easy little pattern tutorial for these so I might do that if you're okay with it since I'm if you here. want to make a I'll pattern do it. tutorial <laughs> I'll do it like, it'll be like, very you should, simple you should just make a video anyway I'm like yes I should no 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 <laughs> I'm talking about like a quick little printed instruction to do this so I'm I'll oh, try and put I that got together you. I thought you meant like a video tutorial no I'm just planning on putting together a quick little printed instruction so people can make it but isn't it just cute 
These were just scraps I had. I wanted something cute for Valentine's Day. But instead, I think that it will be my default and I will just always have it hanging from my mantle unless there's one because I like to have buntings for every kind of holiday. Um, so I made this one and I'm also, if it's okay, we'll insert a picture here of my um, little St. Patrick's Day one I made and um, that's hanging up right now. They're just really fun to add some decor and some way to use your cute fabric scraps and I am obsessed with fabric right now so anyway that was really fun that, so that is was fun. another little finished project there um where would we be putting the pattern we have a website we do and if you want information about how to knit socks <laughs> you can find it on there but I'm gonna have to tell you on your phone you have to scroll all the way to the bottom and I think go to the next page and then go <laughs> because I think I can put a link. You've pinned yeah. the you've pinned something in the sidebar, but it's not the information like the main page. So Okay. I will fix that. But we'll just say it's on our website. You just have to do some scrolling. So because we don't just put you know a lot of Yes, this is just a into side our... thing that we do. This is not our <laughs> life's work. Okay. <laughs> our life's work. <laughs> I'm going to make this my life's work, Emily. No, I'm not going to. So, All right. Okay, so that's where it will end up being. But I mm -hmm. will, once she has that, I will put a link below. There okay, you go. So, because um, I'm writing notes right now. Show notes because I'm fancy. <laughs> Look at you. Okay, I showed last week or last episode my January socks for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles and I now have February socks done. Ooh, those are beautiful. So I do have two. <laughs> so those I'm are gorgeous. thankful to have two feet. So this yarn I have 41 grams left and um, this yarn is Huckleberry Sweets. It was Hula Hut Yarns, but it's now Cat. Buxom Cat. Buxom Cat. B-U-X-O-M. Buxom, Buxom Cat Knits. Knits. Try saying that 10 times fast. Um, her name's Kathy. And I bought this from her um, when we went to Stitches West a couple of years ago. She is delightful. I love, love, love her. She's very sweet. So um, it's a beautiful red. Now the pattern is one that I made up, but I'm going to tell you. I copied Emily because we kind of do that. She talked about ribbing last mm -hmm. time. And I took that ribbing concept and put it in my sock. And so it was one round, you knit your knit stitches through the back loop. And on the second round, just knit them regular. That's mm -hmm. how I did it. Is that what you were saying? Yep. Oh, good. So it's basically twisted rib for one round and then regular rib for one round. So it makes it look kind of braided, but it just gives it a nice texture. So I'm gonna give you where you can see the difference between the two. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can. I'm gonna fold this over so you see the back side where it's not done like that. And you can, can you even see the difference? I think you can, you can tell how it tightens up, but it's not, it's different than just plain twisted rib. I think also because this is stretched out, we wanna see them the same if possible. <clears throat> we'll see if you can see mm -hmm. the difference. Yeah. Anyways. It just gives it's it a, a little, fun little texture, just different even. detail. And um, I'm going to say, well, so I did 60 stitches for Is my this chicken the legs. Is embroidery lace? Is that what no. you're doing? Uh, it's a stitch that I found in a mm -hmm. stitch dictionary that I adapted to fit so that it would fit in 60 stitches mm -hmm. because, like I said, chicken legs. Um, I'm going to say though that it's finicky <laughs> because I had to use, I have this little crochet hook. It's funny, I have this weird one, but I have to use this to go down and grab yarn um, in 
in this opening for the second half of that stitch. Like mm. I can go down on the first half. Here, I'll show you. You get these little like bunny ears. And this mm. one I could do with my needle. This one I had to do with the crochet hook and then put it on my needle. So every single one of these, I had to stop and pick this up. So it was kind of fiddly, it's but so it's so pretty. pretty. It's really I pretty. I really love that pattern. It looks like a grandma's couch cushion. <laughs> Cause look, <laughs> tufted. Like <laughs> it's so pretty. I don't know. It kind of looks like tufting or bunny ears. Like and this. it almost looks diamondy because of yeah. the bunny ears. So, anyways, um, is that everything? That's that's everything. very very pretty. Those are your February socks. These are my February socks. I don't think you have any until now. Just red socks. No, nope. and they're so you. They are. I uh, going through my new wardrobe and putting everything in there and I have all my socks lined up all beautiful by color and I see I have three colors in there. I have like a light teal, I have orangey peachy colors and pinks. That's it. So time for some blues and so and I may some be going and... off of the Rainbow Sock Chronicles to do some other colors and things. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so there's my yarn, my my February socks for Rainbow Sock Chronicles. I love, oh, look at it in the ball. I don't know why, it's but that's so beautiful. It's so pretty. Well, you this get an extra art. contrast in the yeah. camera, too. Cameras create extra contrast where you have mm -hmm. deeper shadows, higher highlights, mm -hmm. and um, so you can see texture and things yeah. a little bit better. All right. So these are my socks for January for the Rainbow Chronicles. Here, let's do it this way. And so these are my pinks, although they're definitely peachy pinks, I'm realizing. And then these are the ones I made for February. And I use Deborah's yarn, Candy Shop Yarns. This is the Sour Cherry Fizz yarn. And so I figured I had to make my fizz socks pattern. So it's just little eyelets. And it is definitely showing up higher contrast in the camera, but it's just a really fun, simple pattern. And um, the yarn is so pretty. So, so pretty. I love it. So those are kind of fun together. I'm getting excited about this. There's my first two pair together. You can kind of see them. So this is really fun. And I am saving the mine. I'm not gonna wear my socks or put them in my drawer until I finish all of them. And then I'll get 12 new pair all into my drawer all at once. So that pattern is available on my website, yarnberry.com. And it is available in several sizes. I think it's got four sizes, so. Love seeing the yarn knit up. I know, it's really fun, it's isn't it? Happy. It's so pretty, Deb. So a lot of people were saying that this looked like brown but it's oh, it's hard to see in here. The flecks are green and golden. Oh yeah. You can't... Definitely, it's definitely a pinky red with flecks of, of green. Kind of true green almost, yeah. yeah. The, I was just double checking the sizes on that, but. I, yeah, I can't decide if I'm going to continue with the Rainbow Sock Chronicles or not because I'm one where I just want to do what I feel like doing that second. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I'm, I don't know if I'm feeling really peachy in March. Oh, I'm totally feeling orangey. peachy. I have my yarn for it. What I've is it? got, and it's yarn that I've held That's on to because I love bag. it. Yeah, this was a bag that I showed last time my friend Becky made for it's me adorable. for my birthday. It has little rainbows inside. Perfect for this. That's so pretty. So this is Amanda Makes Yarn. Um, I don't know if she's dying yarn anymore. I don't, I don't think, think she so. is. Um, and it's called uh, Beachy Pink. I did a swap with her. I made her a bag and she dyed this yarn for me. And it's a really gorgeous yarn. Like I said, this is this and pinks and like light teals. That's what I have <laughs> in my sock drawer. So I'm 
actually thinking this may not be socks, maybe something else. I don't know. We'll see what I feel like doing in a week when I go to cast on my socks. That sounds good. All right, what do you have next, Deb? Do you have any more finished objects? I do, I have a couple more. Why don't you go ahead, I've got one more. All right, so I made some more pillowcases. They're so pretty. These are two of them. I also made a third one, but I sent it to my friend already. He's getting it, so anyway, just that fun little crochet edge there. Beautiful. Isn't that fabric pretty? And then this one's my favorite. Look at that. I love that really beautiful kind of just old fashioned roses look with the crochet edge there. That is I'm definitely so finding I have three specific favorite crochet edges that I do. Mm -hmm. This is the one where it's a bigger kind of a shell pattern. So it's a two row. You make a shell with space and then you go back over to do a bigger shell across it. So that's one of them. This one, they're all shells. This one is little shells stacked on top of each other. And then the third one is um, very similar. It's kind of halfway between. It's just one row of small shells, but they're anchored down in between each. So it's just nice and simple. Yeah, anyway. I think I've discovered shells were my favorite. It's just that scallopy make. edge is so it, it pretty. It just looks lacy and Yes. Dainty. And the other thing I love about these is that once you wash them, the, you know, this is um, size 10 um, mercerized cotton crochet thread. Once you wash them, they kind of, it kind of folds up just a little bit to make it look even more kind of, I don't know, less polished, but more complete. I don't know how to explain what I'm trying does to say. Does your band and your fabric, does your band shrink at a different rate than your fabric? It shrinks a tiny bit, but I always press them after and I find when I press them just with a little bit of steam, it goes right back. So it's just so very tiny. So I pre-washed all of my fabrics first mm -hmm. and I found after washing them that the band shrunk and the fabric didn't so much. No, yeah. <laughs> so in the future, I don't think I will pre-wash my fabrics. Yeah, I didn't pre-wash, um, I didn't pre-wash these and um, I, did, I didn't the last group either, and they all worked out great. So they kind of shrink. Since it's all cotton, you know, mm -hmm. and it, even though it's running different directions, so they're yeah, going to shrink slightly different. different. Rates, but like I said, a little bit of steam. Mine yeah. did not. I mean, they're, they like when you take it out of the dryer, it's like that, and then you steam it, and you pull it right back mm -hmm. to that. So Yeah, mine wasn't dramatic, but yeah, it, wasn't it was enough job. to irritate me. But I love them so much. I just want more and more and they're so fun. I can sit down and crochet one in a couple of hours because it's just, you know, that much crochet. It's not a ton. I, a couple of hours. I don't know. Sometime less than a day. <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> okay. uh, We're always joking about that. How Emily is a much speedier maker and she's like, I'm not that fast. Well, I'm not like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not trying to be like, look at me. Look how fast I am. I'm just, well, Get really excited to make things. <laughs> and, and I don't know that speed is, is a yeah, it's not like, like it's merit, a virtue. like a virtue that <laughs> yeah. because you're faster, you're you better, right? A better no, no, you're a better person. Than right. than well, that was that was true anyway. <laughs> Could you be a little less ugly? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're on end today. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's my favorite. <laughs> so, um, did I mention this on my anniversary? Um, I had been married for, how old is Ari again? 22. 22 years. <laughs> and my husband looks over at me, he goes, you've held up pretty well. <laughs> like, gee, thanks. I don't, don't know why that just made me think of it, but I'm constantly bringing that up now and everything like, oh, well, she's held up pretty well. <laughs> that's held up pretty well. So that's kind of the running joke in our house. But, well, at our house now too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I have had people ask me to share this multiple times because on, on my my fairy tale chronicles channel i did like christmas vlogs daily vlogs and i started making a bunny 
but I didn't ever show me finishing the bunny and I'm not showing it on there. So if you're not watching me there, then you won't really care, but that's okay. I'm showing it here. I made a bunny. <laughs> She's so cute. And she has a little skirt and she doesn't have bloomers. Maybe I shouldn't show you if she doesn't have bloomers, <laughs> but she does have a tail. The pattern doesn't call for a tail. Why doesn't it? It's a bunny. It needs a fluffy Why tail. Why does it obviously. call for a tail? Obviously. Unless I'm just missing something, which is entirely possible. So the pattern is Miss Maggie Rabbit. Let me pull out my pattern pieces so that they're not in there. Miss Maggie Rabbit by Alicia Paulson. <laughs> and I didn't make her a little capelet and I started making her shoes, her boots, and I decided I didn't like her with boots. She just needed to not have any. She's adorable. I liked her just like that. Um, the fabric and I bought printed fabric ears are my favorite. That's so my one favorite. thing I did different is it just called for you to cut out the fabric and stitch it down around the edge, but I didn't want it to fray. So I made it larger, tucked it under, pressed it under. Let's see. So that the edge of it is finished. And then I stitched it down. I don't know if that made sense, but gave it a seam allowance, tucked that seam allowance under. And the fabrics, I think all three fabrics, even including this one, are all um, Tilda prints. And then I just used a wool blend felt that I purchased at Will, no, Pine Needles at Gardner Village that's near, near us. And the pattern didn't have pockets, but you gotta Cute. have pockets because sometimes she might need to hold a little treasure in there. So we've got two pockets. So I added pockets. I added a tail. She needs some tiny little carrots to go in her little pockets. She needs something to go in there. <laughs> something. But anyways, just made it for fun. Um, so the whiskers, I waxed them with beeswax to stiffen them because they just wanted to go all over the place. And so that mm. just helped them straighten out and not be quite so wild and crazy. But her Cute. ears are wild and crazy and I like that. She's adorable. <laughs> All right, there's my bunny. She's lovely, beautiful bunny. <laughs> All righty. Oh, I did, I do have to say, on the back side of these whiskers, um, I glued it down quite heavily and let that, that dry so that these don't just get ripped out. Mm. So, because I think it, I think it just had you stitch them through, I think. So. Very cute. Okay. This has been a labor of love. And yes. I have finished my sweater. Let's see if I can show it. That's gonna it's so big. It's a long sweater. It comes down, you know, halfway down my thigh. This is Grace by Ririko, R-I-R-I-K-O. And I knit it out of kind of my sample of my Vanity Fair colorway. So Vanity Fair now is all these colors, but it's a little more saturated than this. Um, but this was when I, you know, was kind of testing it out. So it's got this beautiful cable that runs down the front and it gets wider as it gets closer to the bottom, just gradually gets wider and wider. So that by the bottom, it's that wide. Um, and then it runs down the back as well. And it starts so hard to show, I'm sorry. It starts in the center and then it divides and here, let's open it up this way. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. we have it covered actually right then, here. Then yes, the light won't go through There you it. go. And then it gets wider. We'll put some pictures in here as well. Anyway, so it gets wider there at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> I love it. I love how it fits me. Um, I love the length. I added an entire, the, the um, what am I trying to say, the cable, panels are charted out and I added a section, one extra section, because I wanted it that really nice, long, 
um, look. I also added these pockets. Let's see if I can show the pocket right there. That's just a patch pocket. I just knit a rectangle where I did ribbing, knit stockinette, and then I um, mattress stitched it around the sides, but when I mattress and the bottom, but when I did the mattress stitching, I um, made sure that I was turning the pocket edge just barely under. So it just, it's so neat and tidy. I love it. As I was sewing it, I was like, ooh, you know, every time you pull that mattress stitch and everything kind of goes zoop together. I'm like, ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> One thing I am really happy with, um, early on I talked about how difficult it was to alternate skeins on this project because of this kind of built-in I-cord type edging. It makes it very difficult to alternate your skeins at the beginning of a row. So I ended up hiding my alternating skeins, or hiding it, doing it on the back. Let's see if I can show you. You were trying you. to do it in the cable. Area. I tried to do it in the cable. It didn't quite work. So I did it a couple stitches away. I'm trying to Here's a good spot right here to show you. So I alternated stitches right here and it looks great. Um, I was a little worried that you would be able to see that once it's blocked. And if I look for it, I can see it. But Otherwise when you, you just when you, you, yeah, you would never notice it just hanging there. So it worked out really well. Um, it's, a, it's fantastic. One thing I did also do is the pattern with the sleeves, once I completed all of the the written um, decreases for the sleeves, and I was to the point to start the cuff, the it was really still much too wide at the wrist. I don't want a sleeve that kind of hangs here. I wanted it tighter. So I just kind of cinched it in right at the cuff. So I did a, a decrease row where I just evenly decreased around. I mean, it... It, it already, you know, kind of tightens it up once you put the ribbing in. But I decreased, I think, maybe 12 stitches around. Yeah, I think it was 12 stitches um, so that it fit me better. And I, it fits exactly how I want it to. And it doesn't look blousey. Mm -hmm. it, it just kind of tightens up nicely. So anyway, I have worn it a lot since then. Um, it's just kind of the perfect grab and grow, open, grab and go open cardigan pockets nice and long throw it over anything it's great it it's really pretty nice neutral color you know yep neutral <laughs> what do you see in the next one i'm making that's a neutral we have color. really great neutral <laughs> ideas of neutrals for us are different yeah. so <laughs> i love it it was a long process that's fingering weight yarn i'm not a tiny person and a extra long sweater with cabling Cables. every single row. It took a while. <laughs> I, but things. you know what? In the end, I love it. So I love it. how it fits. I Yeah, the alternating skeins. That was not my favorite. But <laughs> yes, I really, really love it. I am so thrilled with it. So, Well, if we're going to go to the effort of knitting a sweater. You should make and, what you love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And using hand dyed yarn, which is not cheap, I'm yeah. going to say, then take the time to make it how you want it alternate those skeins mm -hmm. it's annoying yes alternate those skeins just <laughs> do it really <laughs> i i started that in september and i finished it i guess it's been a week now maybe a little bit more than a week ago something like that so i don't have any more finished objects do you i have this one but did i already you show this two. Um, and then I have that other one I need to talk about. So, no, yes. that one you showed you... In progress. In progress. Okay. And you have another one. Yes. So, I have two more, and they're both quilts. <laughs> <laughs> so, last time we recorded a little um, video about the quilting, the hand quilting on this one, and it is now finished. Um, here's one quarter of it. <laughs> Here, let's open it up. Okay, I'll open it up. Border, this aqua blue border. I know isn't it glorious oh it's so pretty I love it so much it's finished um 50 inches by 50 inches there's that pretty border I've got hearts that are being that are quilted in this big blue border and then there's hearts inside these squares one thing I love about this is you can see the beautiful way the very desirable way that a quilt kind of 
crinkles up once you wash it. When I quilt, I don't pre-wash my quilt fabrics. You want this little crinkle when, when you, um, when you wash it that first time, you get that lovely, um, yeah, that just that lovely crinkly look that comes from a quilt. Mm -hmm. But isn't that pretty? So this is going in my grandma box for a future grandbaby. <laughs> and what's the pattern? The pattern is a thing. It is a thing. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. So the pattern, ooh, I just knocked my books over, is this um, five fat quarter fun. It is by Amanda of Jedi Craft Girl and Amber of Gigi's Thimble. And what they did, it, it, that's just for the center, the four block center. So um, I use the pattern for that. And then I just figured out the borders from there to make it a larger um, quilt that would work for a baby quilt. It's originally um, finished. Sorry, hold on. Um, just the center is a finished uh, measurement of 34 by 34 inches, which is great for like a wall hanging or a table topper or something like that. Um, but I added those borders to make it bigger. So that's the pattern and I just love it. It's darling. The one thing I don't love about this background is I picked it out. I love the, the red and white, but I keep looking at it going, oh, is there something on it? It actually is kind of almost like a, it's not solid white behind the red polka dots. Cause you, can you see there's kind of like these, it's a little streaky is what I'm saying. Hmm. Oh, okay. So as long as you know, that's how the pet fabric is and it's not just dirty, but it's, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really notice that when I was first buying it. So anyway, I hope that the grandchildren won't mind that. I don't think they will, <laughs> considering, you know, first of all, they're not even real yet. <laughs> they are. They're just in heaven. <laughs> that one, I just love it, though. And then the second one, I um, mm. pieced this quilt top back in, I think it was last summer. And um, it's a gift for a friend of mine, my friend Jen, who is like my sister, she is actually moving a couple of hours away and they're they're um going on a grand adventure they're building a a house they're building it themselves as in they are building a house mm -hmm. <laughs> um they've bought a bunch of acres and you know going going to uh get out of the city life and get into the country anyway i wanted to send her something that she could take with her that was from me and so this quilt um Deborah's inserting some pictures here. It is a beautiful, um, let me pull this out. I can show you the pattern. I bought this kit and this is the, the picture of what it, it looks like. And it came with the fabric and everything. And the kit um, was the Lone Star Sawtooth Variation Quilt. And um, it was diaryofaquilter.com, easy Lone Star, it says crib quilt tutorial. I made it for them to be kind of a throw. And so it's using the Fairy Edith line of fabrics by Riley Blake, which I've got some of them here. So here's some of the fabrics, there's little they have these little fairies on them, little like fairy lights, polka dots. So you got the flowers. quilt, but you had plenty left over? I had oodles the, left the, over. I could make another entire baby quilt with this, which I probably will because it's so cute. I love this one right here. Anyway, it's adorable. Um, and so I made that quilt and then I, the quilt top. And then I, this one I sent to be quilted and the quilting was done by Cottage Path Quilting. Um, I saw her recommended by Amber Lindemann, who's the Yarn Hoarder podcast. And um, so I sent the quilt to her. She was lovely, absolutely wonderful to work with. She um, has so many different stitches you can choose. She's so great at communication, very competitively priced, and she did a beautiful job. And so she quilted it and I bound it and I put a little embroidered um, 
tag on the back and gave it to my friend who adored it. She loves it. It made her cry, which is exactly what you want when you give somebody a quilt, right? The good kind of cry. Yeah, I was going to say the good kind of cry. <laughs> oh, why are you giving me a quilt? Not that kind. <laughs> so that was a real pleasure and I'm just really pleased with it. And I think that's all my finished objects. Well, we should move on to works in progress. And while we're on the quilt section, yes. we should continue on the quilt Let's section. Let's continue on the quilt section because I love the quilt section. Okay. <laughs> so I am now working on another quilt. This is a very simple Irish chain quilt. They are made with little blocks like this. And I'm just, this is not a pattern that I've found anywhere. I just have been doing all the math myself. As you know, if you quilt at all, it's a math game. So <laughs> yes, I do use the math skills. Anyway, so these are the little blocks and I am, these fabrics are um, Riley Blake line. No, lying. these are Tilda fabrics. And this is a Maple Farm is the name of the line. And they're so pretty pretty. This is an addition. This is just a scrap that I had. So I have a couple of fabrics. Let's see if I can find another one. This well, this pink right here. This kind of purpley pink is another one. I wanted something slightly darker in there just to give it a little bit of pop. And so I've added those in. And I've put together the first few rows. So this is what it's looking like so far. Isn't that just lovely? So that with the five patch, you know, you, you kind of alternate the white block, the five patch block, and then switch them on the second row. And it gives you this lovely kind of, I don't know, diamond pattern that you get. And that's what makes it an Irish chain yep. block or quilt yep. is, is laying it out that way. And there are much more elaborate Irish chains um, than this. This is, this is a basic. basic. So this one will also have some borders, beautiful borders around it. Um, and I just got the and fabric for those. what is this quilt those. for? I don't know. I mean, I started because I just really wanted to make it. By the way, shout out to S, I don't know if they're Sojo, S-O-J-O fabrics. Um, they, you can find them on Instagram. I love them. They are a great place to get fabric. And because they're here in Utah, they ship they really, yes, they're in Utah. They're in Layton, Utah, and they ship really quickly. So, and when they ship it, I get it the next day because mm -hmm. we're just right by. But this is, these are going to be my two, I'm going to put two borders. I just, I like borders on quilts. I just think they look really pretty. So I'll have these two as the borders. Look at the little birds here in this one. And then this will be my binding right here. And then this one's my back fabric. So pretty. So pretty. Oh, anyway, I'm just in love with it. Here, wait, let's let's have a look here. Okay. Oh yeah, with those. Let's see the combination so we can appreciate this. This all together. It's just yep. beautiful. That's lovely. Yes. So yeah, Tilda collection, um, Tilda quilt collection, and it's Maple Farm. Is the fabric line. Oh, it's so pretty. I love Tilda Isn't that fabrics. I do Tilda too. fabrics are probably at the top of my list of favorites. They're really high up Fa there. Favorites. Sometimes Favorite, sometimes Tilda gets a little there's some of the Tilda ones that are a little more modern. Mm -hmm. And I tend to go for more of the romantic mm -hmm. and kind of classic. But with a little twist and so like this one right here this little let's see if i can find one that little pinky. this little no this one right here it's tiny little blue with little yellow floor flowers oh i just love that <laughs> so pretty anyway very dainty and delicate. so lovely <sighs> yeah i do love it yes i just i can't stop so and I didn't, you know, when you're doing things like nine patch blocks, you can do quick piecing where you sew a big strip of this fabric and a strip of that one and a strip of this one and you put them together and then you go and you cut them across this way. I did not do that for this because I really wanted them to be kind of random 
And so, so I just pieces. cut every little square and just sewed them together. So it takes a lot more time, but then you can get a lot more. Yeah. Money. And and if you were to do this yourself mm -hmm. with scraps, then mm -hmm. that's a way you could do it. With, yes. Like that, you can save the smallest bits of yarn of Fa uh, I know. fabric. Yes. I did that one time every time I had little scraps left mm -hmm. of fabric of my quilter's cotton, uh, depending on the size, cut squares. I would cut one and a half inch squares. I did two These and a half like and I did like four like and a half. Mm -hmm. And I had stacks of them that I just uh, pile up, but I didn't ever use them. And then I sold them. I was like, well, I went to the effort and I sold Good stacks of them. <laughs> I would buy them. <laughs> so they're great. A lot of work. I, I, I have enough of these little squares. I think I'll need to cut out a few more because I ran out of some of the fabrics and I have a lot of this pink one but, or the purpley one. But I want to make um, probably a throw pillow or something. So I'll probably cut a few more of those squares. Oh, but it's just so pretty. Really? I just want to work on it, but I have lots going on. So I can't just do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, I am making some socks. I mentioned that um, each month I was going to make a pair of socks for me for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles and then I would make a pair for somebody in my family. Well, February was just too much. I, I barely got my February socks done. I actually did the toe on March 1st. <gasps> oh, you broke the rules. <laughs> we'll be all right though. It's okay. I don't think there's actually rules. <laughs> There are Rainbow Sock Chronicle police out there, Emily. Well, only if you're entering in giveaways and things like that. So, <laughs> Which I'm not. Yeah, Because I love it. <laughs> so I barely got my own socks done. So I'm just starting on a pair of socks for my daughter. She wants shorty socks. My girls, they like the shorty socks. Well, Ella and Nadia. Claire likes longer ones. So um, I had everybody go through my yarn. I pulled out all of the sock yarn including all the scraps and let everybody pick what they wanted. Nadia's the only one that didn't pick some sort of version of gray or blue. <laughs> so these are for Ella is what you're saying. <laughs> these are, are Nadia's. Well, those are Sorry, for Nadia. I accidentally said Ella. Oh, okay. Nadia is the only one. <laughs> it's okay though. It's fine. It's Aren't fine. those a version of gray and blue? <laughs> I'm like, I thought that you were saying. Okay, sorry. They're a little brighter. Let's say. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're blue and gray. <laughs> <laughs> So the, this is the leftovers from socks that I made for myself just recently. And the yarn is by Biff Sugar Yarn. Oh, I don't have the label with me. They're so cute. Um, it had a coral mini with it that I used for my socks. And Nadia picked out this charcoal gray that I dyed that I made myself a cowl with, a diamond cowl. And so... I said I could make the whole thing out of this, but she wanted some contrast, so she went high Very contrast, cute. high contrast. So I'm doing the heels and toes in this charcoal gray, almost black color. Um, so I'm just doing stockinette. I did, um, let me tell you, I cast on 60 stitches, did 12 rounds of one by one ribbing and two plain rounds before I started the heel flap. And we've discovered that's the magic formula for Nadia's favorite socks. So she doesn't like me to add in any elastic thread like I add in for everybody else that has shorty socks. Um, her feet have grown a lot very quickly lately. So she has like two pair of hand knit socks now. So I just need to get mm. these done. But luckily they're shorties. So it goes pretty fast. They're at that um, age, aren't they? Where they yeah. Just... Well, and now, really, we could all wear the same socks. We're all close enough in size we could mm -hmm. wear all the same ones. And I do have a drawer of ones that just are for anybody. But my girls, they like to have, you know, you like to have your own things. So yeah, for sure. So she's, sometimes will wear some of mine. But for the most part, you know, everybody wears their own. So I'm going to work on these and I won't cast on the next pair for me for March until I finish Nadia's socks. So I may not get two pair done a month. We'll see, we'll see what I do. It's all good. But look, it's in this cute bag. It's all Disney stuff today. I've got my Disney charm bracelet that has all of these charms that I can use as progress keepers if I want. Mm -hmm. I love it. it makes me my, so I think happy. my favorite one is the Mickey ice cream So. Bar. 
Yes, this I one. love that one. And on my sock, I have another one because my friend Kimberly sent me this one. And I've got cute Mickey key and a Cinderella's castle. And this bag was from Kimberly. She made for me Such with a, a matching project or uh, notions pouch and a Tinkerbell Aww. zipper pole charm. Oh, oh so and she, she even sent me this. <laughs> it's a castle. Is it a pen? It's a it's pen. A right? pen. <laughs> so I use this for writing my notes. That's so great. So this is just a happy bag. So fun. Okay. Speaking of Rainbow Chronicles, I have started my March socks. This is my little bowl of goodies that I am using to make my March socks. So they will be scrappy. I think what I'm going to do now, I'm like you where I may not be in the mood for this later. I think what I'm going to do is every other month will be scrappy. And then, you know, so all the odd months will be scrappy socks. And then all the even months will mm -hmm. just be full skeins. Um, because that way I'm using my scraps. Yeah. But I don't necessarily want to do all scraps. I have such beautiful other skeins, you know. That's good balance part. of the thing. Yeah. So one thing I noticed is that um, my January socks, that the, the color for January is pink. Mine are very peachy pink because that's my favorite pink so i'm trying to find little bits of orange you know more orange to make this not just the same as mm -hmm, as january. january so i still need some if you have any little scraps of, that are do. orangey that's what i need because every i need to take like this one out this one is a very pretty but it's you know kind of too light and this one's very pink anyway and get some more orangey yarns in there so Hook me up, Deb. Okay, I'll work on it right now. Yeah. It's great to have a sister. <laughs> <laughs> a yarn sister. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Speaking of this, while you're looking at that, I have to tell you a funny story. So I was in a Zoom meeting on Saturday that is um, for our youth organization, Heroic Youth. And... I, I was on my phone and, you know, we're all doing Zoom, right? So on your phone, you can't see everybody on the screen at the same time. And um, so I was knitting in the meeting, as I kind of often am. And then apparently another lady that's also in our organization, she was also, she was crocheting. And um, this meeting was recorded <laughs> last night. Somebody said, did you all notice that in the meeting... Um, Kirk, who is another guy in our organization, picked up just whatever he could find in his office <laughs> and started knitting with it. Okay. <laughs> now he's a good friend and it's totally That's fun funny. and it's not, it's not <laughs> insulting. It's just funny. So I had to go back on the recording and watch and he went on for like 15, 20 minutes. For he just with, with, I think he had like a big long, um, like charging cord or something and he's just. Oh yeah, and he's making comments, and he's wrapping around his finger, and then wrapping around his other finger. Just like... It's recorded, so we watch. It's recorded for people to go watch. Like, is this a training? Well, yes, but just for a little group of people. I mean, it's it's all internal. It's not, you know, anything that's like supposed to be super professional. But I'm like, thanks, Kirk. I didn't. And the thing is that the joke was completely lost on me at the time. If so somebody hadn't said it, it, I would never have known. And, That's so um, funny. Anyway, it was all hilarious. my oranges are uh, in my other bag. Oh, that is I've a got great this orange. orange. I've got this orange. This That's is a perfect my, one. Um, no, is that one? grapefruit? No, Creams. no, no. Or yeah, orange dreamsicle. Yes. Yes, please. I made myself a pair of socks with this. I told you I have that. It's thing. perfect. Thank you. That's that's actually good cuz that'll pull in enough orange. Yeah, enough orange. Okay. Cuz if you add that that mm -hmm. kind of I've got just like teensy little bits. That's my problem. I've got like that much, you know, so it's not very much. That will be lovely. Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, I'm so glad perfect. I could help. Well, I appreciate it. See. Okay. Let's put, oh, let's see. I don't know where to put things. I have Happy too much arm, stuff. Happy will travel. 
<laughs> yes, actually, that's a great combination. Travel and yarn. <laughs> I think it's really funny that I'm at your house and I happen to have exactly a bag what I needed. filled with little bits of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't seem like an unusual occurrence, actually, if you think about it. <laughs> so I am determined this year to um, use the precious minis yes. and scraps. I want to work on that. So I actually have used a lot of them already. I have passed some along to somebody very sweet. So I was talking about making dish scrubbies last time and about my frustration with finding the right one. Mm -hmm. And I had somebody who was really sweet that said that they were going to make some for me in exchange. We were doing a swap because you know I love swaps for you just some of my up scraps. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I told you I added up all the shipping costs and <laughs> I realized I have to narrow those down. Yeah. <laughs> and I just did some swaps. But um, anyway, so I sent her a whole bunch of minis because she wanted, you know, some scraps and stuff. And that was great because... I had a lot and I always say like I love them so much that I don't want to use them well it's time to just use them nice. so I am so I'm making a blanket I showed this last time I said I would never make one because I'm not a blanket making kind of girl but I am now well at least for this one we'll see mm -hmm. um so I started a granny stripe blanket and I had done that much last time that much but I now have this much done. So, so pretty. I can't do it as long as I would like to, as much, you know, in one chunk of time as I would like to, because that's it's hard on my hands. So I just do like one, maybe two stripes if it's a good day. So cute. Um, per day. And that's about it. So uh, otherwise, this would be done by now because yes, you definitely have a tighter gauge than me. Really fun and soothing. It like, is. Fun. It just such a good rhythm. You get going on this rhythm, and there's just something about the rhythm of this stitch that is so engaging. Like just. <laughs> Soothing, soothing plus the changing of the colors and everything oh that's the fun yeah. part is like what am i gonna use next one of the fun things about these too is how the colors show up compared mm -hmm. to knitting you would get stripies with this but instead you get the little clusters you yeah know, of it does color. change completely from it's, and so it knit. can be really fun to yep. see. yeah so um i didn't i want to but i haven't done this yet i want to get out my little bulb pins Mm. and put a little tag on all of the ones that I know where they came from until I'm done with the blanket and put it on the ends because I have a really hard time remembering things. So while mm. it's in my head, I want to do that. Mm. I don't know why it really matters, but it does. So For you. It matters for you. So that one's really fun. So that's, that's the thing. In this bag, I've wound up several dozen minis, and I've got a bag at home of ones that haven't been wound yet, and I just pull through to see what I want to do next but I need some different colors in here now I realized I put all the same general colors mm. in here so um, I'm trying to vary the saturation levels and speckles and solids and variegated you know yeah. within this so that I don't have them all grouped together in one so that it is hopefully more cohesive because mm -hmm. if I did them all together all the pastel solids and then I yeah. got some variegated and then I did some you know so yeah I'm just trying to break them all up so that it feels like they all meant to go together they do and they're so pretty so and, and i was saying i our gauges you know when we knit our gauge is so similar but our crochet gauge is very different yours is way, way more loose and i feel like i'm being quite loose with mine like i just am really relaxed doing it yeah but, but like here compare so let's hold it up and see i don't very know very different hard. yeah same size hook. Well, I don't, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard well, to compare. Well, this is four rows and this right here is five. So let's oh, hold yeah. up a four and a five. Same size. Same size. Yeah. So I have a good amount of yarn left um, at the end of four rows and mm -hmm. you, it, it pretty much, uh, t using 20 grams. Yeah, I think I, I mean, I have some leftover, but not. pretty close uses it up. Yeah. 
And so I chained 239, used an e-hook, 3.5 millimeter, um, and I'm doing clusters of three double crochets and skipping to, well, that was on the very first chain. Mm -hmm. three, uh, three double crochet, skip two, three double crochet, skip two on mm -hmm. the very bottom. Um, now I have discovered that the end is wider than the middle. It does do that, but Deborah, from my from my blanket that's upstairs, it doesn't necessarily stay that way. Okay. This all kind of relaxes just a little bit. Well, what I was what I started doing after a little bit when I noticed it was quite noticeable is I was noticing my turning chains were loose, so I've made my turning chains tight. Yeah. And now it's a lot more even. Yeah, that, that works out really well. Um, I could do one less turning chain, but... How many turning not... chains are you doing? Are you Three. Doing... I do two on mine. So that, that could be... I was just doing what I was told, Emily. I'm sorry. I know. It's because <laughs> technically three chains are supposed to equal kind of a double crochet. That's what they say for a turning chain. Mm -hmm. But I always find that that's too long for me because I tend to be loose when I chain, so... Well, so I'm sticking with three because that's what I've done, but I'm just making them tight. I have all of my good. ends. I weave them in as I go. And I have all these ends I've left a little bit long because I told you I'm going to glue them. No, no joke. I'm going to mm. get a little dot of fabric glue or tacky glue and go and put a little dot there when it's dry. <coughs> snip it all the way off because I weave them in really well, but I, I'm still making sure that they're yeah. not going anywhere. So I'm going to do that. It's beautiful. And everybody that just fainted when they heard me say I'm gluing my project. Oh, it's great. Sorry. Yeah. I'll drink water. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right. You're going to get through this. We'll get through it together. So I'll show you mine. I started as well. Now I'm using Lay Family Yarns. She is coming out with mini skeins that are based on the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. Mm -hmm. And so they're going with the colors of each month. And um, so I decided to use hers to make this blanket. And so, so far I have the, can you help me hold that? I have the January colors. There's five, I'm doing 20 gram minis and doing four rows um, per color. So there's the five. Six. One, two, well, let three, me finish. Four. There's oh, the okay. five January colors. And then I've now done one of the February. So here's the pink ones. And oh, then okay. I have one February and then I still have these five February to go in. Okay. And this is how much I have left at the end. So I do have a little bit left. It's enough to save and if put you, in scrappy socks. I was going to say, but not enough to do another size. row. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just turning out fun. 3.5 millimeter hook is what I'm doing. And it's just so pretty. And I do have the, the scrappy one that I made that mm -hmm. I finished, I think a, a, a little over a year ago that I, it's not it's, down here. no, it isn't. I'm sorry. I'm pointing because like my family room's over there. That's where it is. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> it's in my family room. It's, I see it's, two blankets it's, over yeah. here. <laughs> it stays on the couch and it gets used all the time. It's kind of my favorite snuggle up with it blanket. And this one is just so pretty. It's so satisfying. Look at that. Ooh, it's just so satisfying and so we had one even growing and up tidy and lovely yeah on oh. the back of our couch we had a really sweet friend to make our family an that afghan was a beautiful one yeah. and i thought that was really sweet but i didn't understand the amount of work that went into that and i really didn't like it because and it was a gorgeous had, intarsia color work it had lots of it wasn't intarsia it was crocheted there's intarsia in well it, i call it intarsia where you have to have bobbins oh yeah, yeah of, you yeah. know like you're it's not yeah. just striped it was yeah. you know a beautiful floral pattern i don't know enough about crochet um but i didn't like it because there were too big of holes and i felt like my toes were always poking through <laughs> so i was dead set against afghans for the rest of my life and now <laughs> i love them it's wonderful i love them but that's one thing i do love about this is that my toe won't poke through. No. Now a lot of people don't really care about that, but that was something that did did bother me as a child. Yeah. All right. Fun stuff. Oh, um, my turn. Yep. I am almost done with the 
this hat. I am making Father Cable's hat and this is a picture of it. I have knit one of these before and there's two versions. There's a fitted version and a slouchy version. I made the fitted one because that's all I had yardage for. And this one I'm making slouchy version. And I'm on the last little bit of the top for the decreases. I'm working on the crown right now. And it calls for, I think, an, a worsted or an Aran weight, I believe. Let's see, worsted weight yarn, worsted. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wash the worsted weight yarn. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, but I'm using fingering weight, held double with a skein, or with a strand of lace weight mohair. And it looks so lovely. It's squishy, it's soft, it's warm. Squish it. Um, and the yarn last time, if you'll remember, it was the Mandy show because Mandy <laughs> made a lot of the things like dyed the yarn or made something that we talked about. Um, and no, she's not dyeing yarn right now and is talking about possibly having talking, it available. Yeah. It was Gypsy Heart, um, is the yarn Wild West Collection Limited Edition, super limited because I think she made six of them <laughs> <laughs> it was really sweet um and it's called you are a daisy if you do I don't know that reference do you I don't and it's 70% superwash wool 30% nylon 437 yards and she dyed this with sagebrush blossoms so I thought that was really sweet dyed using sagebrush blooms from Heber City Utah and then she's got her wild west charms that she if to me, I've got another one on here that's a little cowboy boot. So I'm almost done with it. And this is then going to go into my gift drawer for Christmas time. I had decided that I'm starting early. That's smart. This year. I am starting <laughs> early. So I will have one gift done by Christmas. <laughs> because after this, I'm probably going to move on to everything else and not go back to it until December when I'm like, yeah, I'm not making anything. Look at me starting early. <laughs> well, I started early. I'm not making anything. I'm going to make 40. Yes. Every year. <laughs> Every year. So I'm not knitting for gifts for Christmas this year, except for I'm going to knit seven for hats, <laughs> 17 washcloths, four pair of socks, two cowls. <laughs> What happens so is a quilt. I find that I have the desire and the time. Yeah. So as they have the desire and the time, I make things. <laughs> but I don't plan on doing it. Like, I don't feel like, yes. oh, I have to make this thing for this person. It's just... It just happens. It just it's works kismet. Works out. All right. Well, so Sorry have... about the squeaky. I feel like I should just do a dance. All right, so we had to talk about neutrals and how important it is to have good neutrals in your wardrobe, right? I mean, you know, one of my neutrals is lime green. Obviously, purple Not lime is another green. one. Highlighter. Lime You're green. right. Chartreuse <laughs> neon. <laughs> it's a great neutral. Um, I am going to... Okay, I just about had a panic attack. I thought that my needle was missing. And I'm like... Oh, all of the stitches. No, it's really. just the stitches on hold for the sleeves. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so... Because I need neutrals in my wardrobe, I decided to add neon coral to my wardrobe. And so I am knitting a cardigan, which is showing up much stripier than it actually looks in person. This is the back of the cardigan. I am designing this, you guys, I'm designing a cardigan. I'm kind of freaking out. So it has these la this lace at the um, raglan. raglan increases and it will have some lace at the bottom anyway. And then it's a very, it's an open cardigan. So it looks really small in the front right now. I like closed cardigans. <laughs> closed cardigans? Well, like Isn't it doesn't pull over. Well, it doesn't button. Like it's just okay. meant to be worn open. <laughs> I was just wondering, what's a closed cardigan? A pullover. <laughs> oh, no. So it's an open cardigan, meaning it won't have buttons. Okay. So it's going to have a wide, um, band that goes up the front and around the the collar okay. you know anyway so that's where we are and it's going to be um not cropped but kind of a shorter 
maybe natural, I don't know how you want to say it, hip, you know, hip length. Okay. So it's not super long. Anyway, three quarter length sleeves. And that's what I'm working on. So it's kind of hard to show it, but oh, I'm excited. I love this color so much, so much. And this is DK weight. So yeah, I'll let you know. I mean, the moment of truth will be when I actually finish the body, bind it off and can try it on and go, oh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> or yay, we did it. Let's do the sleeves. You know? <laughs> so we'll see. Luckily, you have the virtue of being a fast knitter. <laughs> I do have the virtue of that, the moral superiority. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, uh, so I'm working on that, and it's so fun. I love the yarn so much. And the yarn is a funny story. The yarn was oops yarn when I was dying. I was going for something completely different and accidentally put the wrong color. The wrong dye in the wrong pan, if you know what I mean. So it was supposed to go in a different pan. So two things combined chemical reactions happened, lightning, you know, strikes reactions. around and then neon coral came out. There was like smoke <laughs> and you know, <laughs> light shining through. Anyway, um, and I pulled it out and I went, well, I can't send that. That's not what I meant. <laughs> but, but yay for me. So I saved it. And it's just been sitting in a basket, like not skeined, you know, still on the rings and everything. And, um, the other day I pulled it out and went, oh, I forgot about this. Let's do this. You pulled it out because you had finished. I finished. Every project. I had finished every single thing on my needles. Although, you know what? I actually lied. I have that two panel blanket still oh, that's upstairs. Liar, liar, liar. It's just it's by the couch and fire. every once in a while one of us knits a row. <laughs> Aria or Abby or I. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. We'll finish it in 2078. <laughs> Kind of like They'll my, my pinwheel blanket. Yeah. <laughs> I should send that to Mandy. Yeah, no kidding. Here you go. Finish off. That's a great idea. Two panel blanket, Mandy. <laughs> um, anyway, but yes, other than that, I had finished all the socks on my needles. I had finished my sweater. I finished the little gnome. Everything was done. And I hadn't yet started. Oh, I guess I had started my crochet blanket. So that was the only thing I had. And so, yeah, I cast it on. And it was awesome. So that was on Friday. That was on Friday. Today is Wednesday. And I didn't work on it at all yesterday. And you saw the sweater. <laughs> She's... It's size eight needles <laughs> with uh, its DK weight. You don't now. have to explain yourself. You... I just make at the rate that you make and that's great <laughs> uh, i'll make at the rate that i make and that's great and that's good i make lots of things i just don't always knit or you know i make yep, you a make lot lots. of different things doesn't really matter the quantity either nope it doesn't there's no competition there so i think that that's everything which is plenty for me I've got one left. Little... This is a joint project i'm going to show you i haven't <laughs> oh, yeah. shown you for a so long time so this is our work <laughs> Look at this! Percent. Look at this bag. I, I made this bag several years ago. Um, was it paper piecing? Yes, this was a paper pieced project. No, 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 no. This one wasn't. It's not paper. Pieced. It's not paper pieced. Um. Anyways, but I, I put it in here at Christmas time because it needed to be in a bigger bag, and it's just gonna stay here. So, um, I haven't shown this for a long time because I haven't really made much progress, but this is the Spring in LA sweater and it is a stunning design. I started it one year ago. So if we're going to talk about speed, I feel like that's pretty speedy for me. <laughs> <laughs> so the body of it is a solid color and it is with this one, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, a strand of fingering weight mo uh, wool and a lace weight mohair held together. And it's knit in pieces, so front and back. And then the sleeves are um, bishop sleeves or balloon sleeves that are all lace uh, mohair, lace weight mohair. And there's color work of lace weight mohair. So I finished the front and the back and I started on the sleeves and I was very frustrated because it's just 
sl slippy and grippy at the same time. It is slippy and grippy. And yeah. I had to focus so much on that. I couldn't do anything else. And I just didn't find that I had the brain space that I needed anytime I wanted to work on this. But it called for a rolled cuff. I did a, you know, just regular ribbed cuff. And I started doing the the color work and I got to about here and then I put it down for a long time and then I picked it up um, not too long ago and I knit up to here and Emily said that looks really fun I want to try and I said okay and I passed it on and she did the rest of the color work so now I can go and do all of the rest of the sleeves um, and I have to say I really really enjoy knitting with lace weight mohair, just single strand. I love that. A lot of people don't, I love it. So I'm actually looking forward to that. So we're gonna do that again with the second <laughs> sleeve. But look how pretty that is. So with the second sleeve, you'll do the cuff and then bring it over and I'll do the color I work, think I'll or... do the cuff up to about here. Okay, yeah, however much you want. It, because we do have a different gauge, but not enough. But I think I wanna make sure that, that the that bottom blousey... stays the same and then I'll pass it on over to Emily because she's also Speedy Gonzalez. So that because it took me a month to do like that much at the rate I was going. So um, I just want to have this done before I die. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I should knit very slowly to make sure to keep you around. Is that the oh, idea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that pattern is by Wool and Water Works. Or no, Wool and Water. Let me look. Wool and Water Knits. Um, it's just, it's a lovely pattern. And if you like knitting with mohair, then you'll love this project. If you don't like knitting with mohair, pick some different yarn. <laughs> but that is part of what makes it just so beautiful. For sure. So that's my last work in progress for Ooh, now. Ooh. We made it. We're almost like, I mean, really, when you think about it, we don't record these that often. So it's not like we're churning out piles of things every day. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get together and I'm like, damn, wow. we make a lot of stuff. We do. And I don't know what this was in. I'll be, oh, I do. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't don't lose, lose the notions. <laughs> pouch. Um, so I was watching a video the other day. Um, it's a art channel, Jazza, J-A-Z-Z-A -Z -Z -A, on YouTube. Hilarious. Um, but he did a video and it was, uh, where he made other YouTubers into chairs. He like painted <laughs> them in, in, into chairs. That was all the explanation. <laughs> It's the funniest thing because you watch it and you're like, especially if this is the first video you've ever watched of his, you'd be like, what, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> but essentially, because he has a, um, oh, what is it on Skillshare? He has, has videos all about presenting to the camera, making YouTube videos, like doing, doing quality work. And then you see this, essentially what it is, is all the things not to do, but he gives no explanation. <laughs> Of it he just puts out a video and it's so cringy and I'm like I do all of those things oh man I don't really care <laughs> That's funny. so it is funny so you should go watch that oh, I forgot to write down notes for all of our works in progress Sorry. all right I'll write mine down for you <laughs> before you leave just let's not forget all right okay but I have to share you said something funny I have to share something else funny <laughs> last night there's this um there's this comedy club here in utah called dry bar comedy because you know in utah okay. we tend to be very um we're, we're not we're not big drinkers <laughs> so well, that's the joke on, is the dry bar <laughs> <laughs> depends on what population okay the there's state. a lot of religious people who don't drink let's put it that way so there's the a reputation of that anyway so it's kind of a joke that this is called dry bar anyway um but this guy, they they, have, they put out videos on Facebook and so on. And one of the videos last night was all about when your wife is a crafter. Oh. <laughs> I turned it on and watched it last night. And it was 
so funny. My whole family, like I was just in the living room and then they all came around and were watching it. And my husband wasn't watching it. He was just sitting like across from me, but listening. And he's just like <laughs> shaking his head, but with this grin on his face. It was so funny. So if you want to go and join our um, Facebook group, I will share this video into our Facebook group. It's a Facebook video, so that's all I can do. Um, but I'll put that in our Meanwhile at the Castle Facebook group. <laughs> it was pretty hilarious. It made me laugh. <laughs> this poor guy, he's like, <laughs> just, he's just so funny. He's kind of like, just the crafting makes him want to die, basically. <laughs> but it's hilarious. It was so funny. Anyway. It, it keeps us sane and it kills other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm laughing about it, but I can't, you know, it, I'm never going to deliver it the way he would. So you just have to watch it. So come join our <laughs> Facebook group and I will put that in there for you to watch. <laughs> so funny. All right. It's time for us to move on to our next segment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is my turn to do our Kindness is Like Sugar segment. And um, we have been homeschooling for many years now, and it's just kind of a, just our life. It's, mm -hmm. it's just what we do, what we know. And I know that there's a lot of people that it's new for you now to be um educating your children at home and that it can be really hard and frustrating at times. And for some of you, it may be a wonderful new world. And for others, it may just be, you know, jab, jab something in your eye. I don't know. But... <laughs> Painful torture. <laughs> so, and we have had both sides of that yeah. because everything's not puppies and unicorns and rainbows all the time. And so... Um, I've had times where things have been really, really hard and I will say, I don't know everything. Just putting that out there. Like <laughs> as much as my children may think that I should know everything, I don't. And so to homeschool my children, I don't have to know everything. Mm -mm. I just need a tribe. <laughs> I need a tribe of people that we can all pool our talents and knowledge and skills together to help each other. And so that's, that's yeah. what's happened in our lives is we've kind of found our homeschool tribe. And, um, what's happened is in, in the end, we are all helping to raise each other's children. And my children have more than one mom. <laughs> And that's good because sometimes I get like broken as a mom and they need another one. <laughs> well, really, that's what has happened over uh, there. There was a time I've talked about with um, my oldest daughter, Claire, where um, I just I couldn't reach her and I couldn't be the one to help her. And so I had to rely on other other moms to to be her mom at, that could reach her and could help her. And so that's been such a blessing to know that there are other people that have cared for my children. And um, mm -hmm. in particular, there's there was a time when I was so heavily focused on helping Claire that my other children were really neglected. And I had a friend who knew the situation and was just so kind and just said, hey, Nadia, with my youngest child, I have a daughter that's your age. Why don't you come and join us for our writing class and our music class? And essentially she's just become another daughter. Nadia's become another daughter mm -hmm. in their family and she has helped so much in our family. Um, and to her, it's not a big deal, but to me, it's a really big deal. You know, all of the kind things that people have done. So with that, I don't necessarily have any, you know, moral of the story other than paying it forward mm. <laughs> that, um, I've been so blessed in life that I think I have to take the opportunity and look for the opportunity 
to try and do that for other people. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking for those opportunities as, as they come and they present themselves. I don't usually have to look hard. They usually present themselves and um, to just try and, and pay it forward because you can't always pay it back. But, mm -hmm. but we can try and spread that love out into the world. So if you are struggling right now with homeschooling your children, <laughs> you got to find a tribe. And that takes effort. Just start with a fa another family, yep. you know, one yep. other family. Yep, one other family. And um, I do want to say that you only get out of things what you are willing to put into it. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not always able to put in 100%. But overall, communi uh, mm -hmm. no, no, what's the word? Cumulative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like I get from things what I put into them. I get from relationships what I put into them. I get from the efforts of homeschooling what I put into it. And so um, that's that's just the lesson that I have learned. Absolutely. You and you know what? Yeah. I mean, the thing about that is that it can sound daunting and it can sound like, but I'm already giving everything I can to the things I have. How can I go and give to somebody else? And what's interesting is that when you do that, it doesn't take from you. It adds to you. Yeah. So if you're feeling empty, if you're feeling drained, if you're feeling stretched and, you know, worn thin, actually for me, finding something you can do to bring joy to somebody else actually decreases your overwhelm and your exhaustion or your... Mm -hmm. um, burnt Mental out fatigue. fatigue yeah fatigue that feeling of being burned out yeah. it's really astonishing it, it maybe seems counterintuitive and yet you know we believe that's that's a gift from god god mm -hmm. gives us that because he 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 sees us caring for his other children and he gives us a, a better gift for that so yeah. it's a beautiful thing so hang in there <laughs> We got this together, you know. Yep. We got to got to work together on this. Not, Absolutely. Not a look at oh, they're failing, but just cheer mm -hmm. each other on, help each other, look for somebody that mm -hmm. you you have a skill that maybe they don't have and they mm -hmm. have one that you don't have and you just work together to make it all all happen. Yeah. So. It's kind of like taking away that ability, that that thought of being an island and realizing, you know, you are a member of a human race family and everybody, you know, your brothers and sisters together. Yeah. We actually have comments all the time. I wish I had a sister. And you know what? We know how blessed we yeah. are yeah. and um, fortunate and um, that not everybody has the great family relationships. But we can we can go and we can create those relationships. We've and... adopted a lot of family. Yes, we really have. So you <laughs> <we> can too. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, And some that, of you have adopted us as your yes, family. Yes, and we love that. That's so, great. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> said there was no moral to the story, but there was. So there you go. There's always a moral to we the story. We don't need to have a moral to the story, but... There's a moral to every story. There is. <laughs> it there just is. is. All, right. All right. Time for shop news. Emily. Emily has some shop news. Let's I am see. so happy to finally be adding more things back into the shop. It's been a slow start to the year. Um, I just, I'm going to share a few things that are available. I have my maple sugar party sets are in the shop. They are so fun. And I have Vanity Fair. This is the one that I knit my sweater out of. It's purples and pinks and some greens in there. I have Don't Bother Me, I'm Reading. I love this one. I also knit a sweater out of this one. I have a Lillian cardigan knit out of this, but in a worsted way. And that's a really fun one. And I have some of my author colorways. Here's just a few of them. I have uh, this one's Austin, Alcott, and Montgomery. But I have a few other colors as well. So those, these are available. They are dyed to order and they are available on all of my bases. And I dye them when you order them so that they're specifically really great for things like sweaters and stuff like that, where you need... All to have them all dyed at the same time. You're still going to want to alternate skeins with hand dyed yarn, but they're dyed at the same time. So your variations are much less that way. And then if you ordered Hunger Games for February and have not opened your package yet, you should all have received them. But if you haven't opened it yet, 
And it's time Don't to just... Don't look right now because I want to show you. Girl no. on Fire. I love this so much. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> so do you. You have one of these. I got, I got a set. Um, yes. So this was the February colorway. And I am putting up the listing today for March's um, club. This is going to be returning because I love it's it so, so much. <laughs> it has some of those corally bits like that are in your yes. sweater, pinks, deeper fuchsias, oranges, like all the. <sighs> yes. Are you doing it as a sock set in your shop? I, or just... I, I probably will offer both. I will probably offer it as a set and also as a single skein. Uh, or as a, just the skeins. Mm -hmm. Do you do yes. this where you have to like dig yes, down dig in down and, and to find see, all the variations? Like what else do I see happening in there? Yes. That's what I love to do. Ooh, like right there. Isn't okay. that pretty? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this one is definitely going to be returning. So I will put that in the shop as well. But um, March's Hunger Games Club will be in the shop. And I have, to, I have to look on my phone and see what the theme was. I'll tell you what the theme is. But you should, uh, here, give me one moment. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yes. I remember now. So, March's theme is Flowers for Rue. So. That will be. <laughs> I love The Hunger Games. The first time I read The Hunger Games, I was like, I mean, I was fascinated. I burned through all of them. And then I got to the end and I was like, are you kidding me? And I was mad. And I thought, this is a horrible book. This is a horrible series. And then I've read it like five more times since then. I watched all the movies many times. And now I love it. So I have not read them. I love it. I'm going to tell you my story. <laughs> <laughs> they are not so, necessarily a positive, happy, cheerful, uplifting. Well, I haven't read any of them. And... The first movie was coming out, and Emily's like, we should go to the midnight showing. And I was oh, like, yeah. Shaky that would be fun because we went to the midnight showing one time of one of the Harry Potter movies, yeah. and that was so much fun. I'm like, friend. okay. I don't know anything about Hunger Games. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so Jason's going with me. We go and sit down, and it's it gets going, and we just were like deer in the headlights. What? is this people are watching this for entertainment <laughs> children killing children and oh i know yeah i was appalled and left like when we went home and i was like why did we watch that mm -hmm. plus it's like shaky so, cam through the whole first movie yeah. it was like Ugh. i didn't even see that i just saw everything <laughs> else that was just like what is this doing what is and so i didn't know anything about it so um i was like i'm not watching any of the other ones and then I started hearing things about the other ones, and it was more redeeming. And then there were messages and stuff. Like, There's stuff to be learned. There's stuff to be. And gained. I love a moral, <laughs> and I love allegories, and I love anyways. Mm -hmm. So symbolism and stuff like that. So I watched the next one. I was like, oh, okay. And then I watched the next one. I still haven't read the books though because I can't go back to that. I will never watch that first movie. And I don't think I could ever read the first book. And if that's the case, I'll never. Yeah. Yeah. There's things I pull from that all the time in conversations. I mean, I'm always having conversations like remember who the real enemy is and things like that, you know, just good stuff. It's good fodder too when you put together simulations. Like there's a lot to be, yeah. a lot of ideas that come in there. Good stuff. All right. I don't have any shop news because I post it all online. <laughs> I don't have, I don't, Follow, I, yeah. I, yeah, I go to, inst on Instagram is where I post any updates mm -hmm. and every other week um, I have an update, a shop mm -hmm. update. I actually did just do the cutest yarn ever. I did unicorn poop. <laughs> It's do, so, unicorn do, sorry. It's so cute. Because <laughs> I found so candy cute. dispensers that were little unicorns that pooped candy. And it was so <laughs> cute. And I was like, I have to dye yarn with this theme. And I did. And then I also bought every peep known to man mm -hmm. that was ever created and dyed yarn based on peeps, colors. And peeps, for those who don't live here in the U.S., they are little marshmallow chicks 
Or bunnies, and depending, now yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. then they also did bunnies. Um, they're originally chicks that are coated in different colors of sugar, and they're pretty much just sugar because they're marshmallows coated in, in sugar. sugar. <laughs> but they're adorable, and the marshmallows are like a lighter, fluffier marshmallow. And then they now have some like colored one or not colored flavored different flavored ones and they also have gourmet peeps like gourmet peeps really but you know they're mm -hmm. different flavors filled with stuff dipped in things so <laughs> filled with stuff dipped in things <laughs> <I> like that <laughs> so anyways that's what peeps are and they're anyways it just so much fun the colors are mm -hmm. just my thing right now i am kind of having an 80s an 80s um I don't know. I'm flirting with the 80s right now. That's what I'm doing. That's fun. So. <laughs> we have a new radio station in Utah called Bob Radio. We do? And it's the 80s, the 90s, and, and whatever. And it's just really like tongue in cheek and, uh -huh. well, just kind of not taking itself seriously. And it is so fun. So. Oh, I might check. I haven't listened to the radio in, well, since Pandora came out. I have no Bluetooth in my car. So I have to oh. listen to the radio. <laughs> you know what I did when I didn't have Bluetooth and my CD player didn't work? I listened to classical music. I do a lot of that, I too. I love classical music. Me, too. But people thought that I was doing that because I was, like, trying to torture people. But <laughs> Nadia was in my car the other day, and she said, you know, if my mom turns on music, we all know it's time to stop talking because she wants us to not talk. If I turn on classical music, it is the, <laughs> I'm stressed, everybody be quiet, yeah, and everybody the... just immediately... Mm. <laughs> but the guests in the car don't know that and they keep talking <laughs> and so Abby was in the car one time and I turned it on and she was like going and naughty was like Abby like what are you you're supposed well, to Abby's talk. always going like that and she's like Abby classical music means be quiet oh so, I wanted to talk about Abby and her new glasses oh tell about Abby Sorry. Abby got new glasses she got glasses for the first time and so now everybody in our family except for Isaac has glasses we're all we're all blind but um she's so cute in them she, she looks is. so grown up she is. <laughs> anyway i went on and on about stuff but it's fun it's good stuff i love it one thing to note i'm sorry this is jumbled but back to sh the shop news section is that um we'll have people post on youtube and ask us questions about yarn and honestly you know Instagram is going to be the number one place you're going to be able to find things. But you can also, you know, follow my, go to my shop, go to Deborah's shop, and you can just check in there fairly regularly, see yeah. what, what's going on. Um, I also have Facebook. Um, Yarn Bray is on Facebook as well. So we always yeah. post things there. We don't always share it here, but we always post things there. Um, one big thing to note, I will be switching my shop from Etsy back to Shopify shortly here. Back to here. your own domain. Yep. Yeah. Um, because yeah, so it would be candyshopyarns.com. I have to figure out the technical side of it again. Oh, oh no fun. I'm sorry. That, that, that's what's kept me from doing it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I will announce that though. When that happens, I will make sure everybody knows. So right. right now it's on Etsy. Well, there you go. That is the end of another stellar episode, Emily. <laughs> Feature length. Another feature length. <laughs> I feel like I can hold my head high knowing I'm creating all of the content everybody <laughs> desires to see. So. Oh, we love you all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.